think I need a new shirt. I've got holes in it. In the UK, if you're into these beautiful machines, then there's a fairly good chance you're projecting either a 177 or 22 pellet downrange. We have this sub 12 foot pound limit law, and let's be honest, we utilize that restriction pretty well. In fact, some say it makes us British better shots. That'll rattle a cage or two. Anyway, as the law is not caliber restrictive, one of the most common questions I get asked is, what about 25 sub 12 foot pounds? Does it work? Should we do some science and find out? Disclosure time. This video is made in association with airgun101.com, the best place on the planet for the latest airgun videos from the best creators. And my day job is airgun101shop.co.uk and that is the best place for all the best gadgets and gizmos in the airgun world. So, sub 12 foot pound, 0.25, totally legal in England without any license required, but it's bigger and heavier than a 2.2 or a 177. So will it work? <laughs> Firstly, the gun. Manufacturers really don't get involved greatly in 0.25 sub 12. Most just don't make them. So how do we do the test? Well, I'm using my Crown Yellow Jacket, or Bumblebee. Now this rifle is nearly three years old and it normally runs as a 30 cal FAC. I bashed, tuned, over tuned the hell out of this rifle for the last three years. So it's not the latest Mark 17, it's an FX Crown. But to make the test, I have dropped a 2.5 barrel kit on, 600 mil. It takes about five minutes to make the change. And that's the joy of having something like this. I'm not landlocked, I can actually make changes. Why not use an impact or a wildcat or a day state or an air arms or one of the others? Well, it's this little dial here. This rifle is valved for high power, but I need sub 12 foot pounds. And this is the only rifle in my cabinet that has an adjustable transfer port which when turned to low, and then the regulator set to approximately 110 bar, gives me instant sub 12 foot pound power. Super quick and super simple to do. There are those of you out there that will ask, why not just put a 2.5 barrel kit on a sub 12 foot pound rifle? Well, this isn't valved right. Plus there's this legality thing. Really, you can go down, but not up. There's a comment section below if you want to write about that. For those of you out there that wish to replicate my results, I'm using 0.25, 25.4 grain pellets, and I'm reckoning that I'm looking for around a max of about 461 feet per second to stay legal. So around 440 feet per second is ideal. Element optics 6 to 24 by 50, first focal plane scope, and no limit mounts. You won't have enough dial on any scope if you do not use no limit mounts. The drop on the pellet is just too great. I'm using a PARD NV007 to capture footage with a universal mounting bracket because I can swap it from rifle to rifle quite easily. In my Impact M3, which is now just there, I'm using that as a spotting scope. And my onboard rangefinder on my M3 is also going to make sure that I'm shooting and recording the ranges so you know what I'm shooting at. So, in sub 12 foot pounds, 2.5 caliber, I'm going to do accuracy at 20 yards, 26 yards, and 53 yards. Gonna try and do some hitting power and I'm going to try and record the retained energy. Shall we get started? 20 yards first. Five shots in each target. And I have to say, they're all easily under a 5p coin. And the noise when the pellet impacts the pellet catcher is clearly greater than a 2.2 or a 177. 
Now let's move back to the 26 yard mark. First group is without making any zero change at all on the scope. Ignore the scope stickers, I didn't change those to begin with. And you can see the drop from 20 to 26 yards, which is approximately three centimeters. Quick dial for zero and shoot again. And the groups are as good as what you would expect from any 2.2 sub 12 rifle. Even though the pellet is starting out the end of the barrel at around 150 feet per second lower than a tuned 2.2, it still gets there very quickly and the impact is almost instant. If the target was a rat at 25 yards, the rat would very quickly be an X rat. But what about the arrival power of that pellet? Now, because I'm a bit greedy in life, I've got two chronographs. I've put one on the crown up there and I've put one on a tripod just there. And this bit is where I'm hoping that I get the shot leaving the barrel and the pellet arriving at 25 yards. And the silly thing is I'm actually recording the bit that I'm telling you that I'm going to try it after I've actually tried it and it's worked, if that makes any sense. Anyway, these are the results. On paper, the arrival velocity should be a little higher, but I am shooting in wind coming from the front, the side, and then sometimes not at all. Light rain, and these are real outdoor conditions, so I do expect a variation. I can't figure out if the BC is 0.038 or 0.017, but we have to say at around 25 yards, it's hitting at an average 372 feet per second, or about 7.8 foot-pounds, and that's more than enough for close range pesting. What about, and I'm going to say a word that's going to make some of you titter out there, what about penetration? Well, I use soap. Do not laugh. I don't have gel or anything like that. The result is approximately one centimetre of intrusion and plenty of damage on the outside. And the pellet has compressed a little bit and stopped quickly, which means it's hitting hard at seven foot pounds and stopping quickly. So it's dumping its energy in what you're hitting. And that's kind of what pest controllers want. There's a lot less chance of that pellet going right through. Moving back to 53 yards then. First couple of shots are to zero. And then I start shooting. And I have to say, even in wind and light rain, it's grouping. The pellet does arrive slower, but it's possibly, possibly arriving at an average of seven foot pounds. Would I take a pest shot at 50 yards? Maybe not. That would need a little bit of refining for me, but it's still impressive. It has the arrival power without doubt. Interestingly, the 2.5 pellet between 26 and 53 yards retains its energy and speed, while conditions do not match the expected ballistic paper results every time they are within a few feet per second depending on what bc you want to accept 53 yards can arrive between five and seven foot pounds with wind and rain it's not exact science i get that but i have produced what you can use as a guide my results do match some ballistic data for both bcs it is just the weather and the wind and the rain and all that that's kind of making it more difficult. While I do think 25 yards is max pesting range, I did want to bash some tins and see what would happen at about 30 yards. Does it open stuff up? Will it pass through volumes of liquid? And is it accurate for things at 30 yards? Well, my answer is very quick and simple. At 30 yards, it will hit the required zones time and time again with ease. And tins, well, at 30 yards, that 2.5 sub 12 pellet will pass straight through liquid and carry on. So at 30 yards, it still has legs. But I stick with my earlier conclusion 
because of the speed of that pellet getting there, that 25 yards is max for pest control, at least with my experimental setup. So what do I think? 2.5, sub 12, does it work? Well, out to 25 for ratting, yes, why not? Targets, yes, why not? Past 25 yards for hunting, you've got to be accurate. It has the power at arrival, but it is moving a lot slower when it gets there. Magpies might duck and hoppy bouncy things might need reaching out with something a little bit quicker. But the idea has legs without doubt and lighter ammo might help in the future. But that's a whole new experiment. Before all you non-licensed holders out there in the UK start screaming, I want one. Let's be clear, FX do not make this for retail in sub 12. This is a one-off demo. But if you own one in FAC or maybe you're in the USA, you can make your 2.5 crown give a huge shot count, hundreds of shots actually, in 2.5 for close range pesting or backyard plinking, just by turning that dial and the reg down. I do think because of pellet weights, even a small velocity change makes things go over the sub 12 limit a lot easier when using that in 2.5 compared to 177 or 22. So that may be why manufacturers stay away from this idea. Plus everything is valved and kind of set for 177 or 22 in the manufacturing process. And is that development worth the sales? Mm, I don't know. Plus, if I dropped a 2-2 barrel on here now, straight away it would be over the 12 foot pound limit. So maybe the law in that respect isn't helping. One thing is for sure, the sub 12 foot pound caliber law should not be abused or bent. Let's keep our sport. So please, boys and girls out there, behave yourselves. I've done the science. I have given you the approximate details, shown it working legally. You out there need to decide if it's right and if it would work for you. And you need to decide in your own way how you would get your hands on one. If you have enjoyed the video and found it useful and answered one of the burning questions out there that we've always wanted to know, please do give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and ring that bell, particularly if you're watching this on YouTube, because it means that YouTube will inform you when we've put out a new video. Failing that, just watch it on airgun101.com. It comes out on there first and you can subscribe and join the mailing list and we'll tell you every week when the videos come out. That's it. Like I say, hope you found it useful. I really enjoyed learning this and experimenting with this. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Cheerio.